everyone. Welcome back. Please comment, and subscribe, folks. Comment, and subscribe, like the videos. Also share the videos. I want to thank everyone that does like, watch, and share my videos. You folks are the absolute best. Listen, folks, there's a link tree down below. It has the link to all of my social media. Please follow me across my social media pages. It also has the link to my YouTube pages as well. Please go down there. Go to my YouTube pages. Subscribe to all those YouTube pages. And turn on your notifications for those as well so that when I post content, you folks will be in the know. So with that said, I want to push that to the side. I've come to talk to you folks today about the Chris Johnston end of the year press conference. Now, we all know we're moving on from Adam Gaze. Um, he's gone. Joe Douglas is here. Uh, we got our team president, Jaime, as well. We're trying to find a new direction. We're trying to find the head coach that's going to take us where we need to go and help get this franchise turned around. We're a franchise that has a lot of decisions going forward, lots of decisions that really will impact our future. Um, and Chris Johnson sat down and he said some things that I thought were very, very uh, pertinent to this situation. Um, one of the things that he said starting off that he was just tired of losing. And I thought that that was, <laughs> you know, pretty big there. <laughs> um, you know, he talked about how when he would go to games before, you know, the situations that we're in right now where fans aren't able to go to the stadiums, um, he said that, you know, fans would give him an earful. And there had been a lot of, you know, loyal, long-lasting fans that had been around for years. I mean, some of them even before Namath that would talk to him about the pain that they were feeling about, you know, this franchise not being where it should be. And even he, him himself, Christopher Johnson said, you know, even as a Jets fan himself, that he, you know, understood uh, the pain that they were going through. And he was, you know, just sort of said that the, you know, the team hadn't, the franchise hadn't got to where uh, he hoped that they would. He also spoke about, you know, moving forward that he, you know, wants to find a CEO type head coach. And a lot of the, the news media took on, they latched on to that immediately. He was immediately asked the question, you know, Kind of, hey, what are you saying about Adam Gaze? But at the end of the day, Adam Gaze, if you go back uh, to when he was first hired here, he came out and said that he wouldn't have anything to do with the defense. There was direct questions um, asked to him by reporters, you know, on the day, you know, especially when Greg Williams got hired. Uh, he was asked if there was something going on with the defense, if you see that things aren't going right, are you going to even do something about it? And he just kind of talked about how Greg Williams, you know, things weren't going well that, you know, Greg Williams would be the guy to figure it out. He even talked about how he needed a head coach of the defense. So we all knew, you know, even people that had watched Adam Gaze before he got here knew that he was not going to have anything to do with the defense. He's just not that type of coach. But going forward, they want to find, um, you know, a coach. The next head coach, they truly prefer them to be a CEO type style uh, coach. Somebody that's going to have their hands in more than just their particular expertise side of the ball. So if it's a it's a guy that's known for offense, they want to bring a guy in that understands, okay, yes, the offense is important. I'll make sure that that's taken care of. But I also want to make sure I have my hands in other things as well. I want to make sure that special teams is good. I want to make sure, you know, that I, I get in them defensive meetings as well. You know, stuff like that. And we've had issues with that in the past as well. Even before Adam, I remember Rex Ryan used to get knocked on for that a lot, a lot. Um, and he, you know, at first when he got there, wasn't really a part of the offensive side of the ball as much as a lot of people thought that he should be. But eventually he got in, you know, on those things and started to attend meetings and stuff like that. But that was always like the big knock on Rex was that all he cared about was defense and he didn't give a damn about the offense. So, you know, going forward, they want to make sure that they get a coach in here that understands and loves, you know, uh, or has an appreciation for both sides of the ball and is going to be able to oversee uh, you know, both sides of the ball and get some solid, you know, pretty sure a solid coaching staff around here as well that's going to succeed doing that too. Um, another thing that he said when he talked about the coaching search was he said that Joe Douglas and the team president, Jaime again, Eli, would conduct the search and that Joe Douglas's opinion as far as, you know, um, who he thought would be a great, uh, a great head coach to fill the position, his opinion, because he's the football guy, his opinion would be weighed you know, would have the most weight attached to it out of everybody. Um, so it's pretty much kind of like Joe Douglas's guy. If he wants that guy, then more than likely they're going to go with him. Uh, but he also said, hey, you know, that they're, the, you know, the Johnsons, Christopher Johnson, uh, you know, say, hey, he would have the final say, which a lot of people read into. And they said, well, if you have the final say, then, then that just basically means that Joe Douglas doesn't have much say at all. No, that's not true. Listen, he has the final say because he's the owner. 
he signs the checks. Okay, like that's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If if there's a guy out there that Joe Douglas likes, but there's just something that doesn't sit right with Christopher Johnson, or if he just doesn't feel like this guy, you know, is the right guy for whatever reason, then I'm pretty sure he'll voice that and they'll, you know, either work that out or move on uh, from the guy. But if honestly, if Joe Douglas gets a guy that he truly feels is the right guy for the job and explains to Christopher Johnson, sits down with him and explains, hey, look, this guy gets the X and O's, he's a leader, he's this, he's everything that we need, and I can work with him, and we can move forward and really get this franchise going. I don't think Christopher Johnson won't sign off on that. Um, I think that he, I think that Christopher Johnson has learned from the past. Um, this stuff with Adam Gay, the whole Adam Gay saga is directly on him. I think he's felt the pain and the reverb from that, <laughs> the impact of that as well, because there's nobody to blame but himself for those situations. And I think that he sat back and really took a long look at himself um, and, you know, the state of the franchise and said, you know, I really don't know what I'm doing. And I think he's more than willing to accept the counsel of Joe Douglas, you know, that's his general manager. And I think that the Johnsons have finally come to grips with allowing football guys to make football decisions. You hire Joe Douglas for a reason and you gotta let him do his job because if you don't, what is he here for? And I think that Christopher Johnson honestly has come to, you know, come to grips with that. I, I really do. You could see the pain in his face, honestly. You could see that he felt embarrassed, that he felt, you know, um, honestly stupid for getting into this situation with Adam Gaze. I really do believe that he's learned his lesson. Maybe, you know, you can comment down below and let me know what you think about that. Uh, maybe some people might say I'm a little naive about this because the Johnsons have been meddlesome in the past. But I really, I really think that he's learned from those issues. Um, just continuing, he also talked about, you know, the possible change in the power structure of the organization as well. Again, this is something that why I think that, I think Joe Douglas really has his ear is because some of the biggest problems with the Jets organization has been that power structure. The fact that the coach and the GM both report to the owner and they're on equal footing. And that, that may work for some other franchises, but it does not work here. And I think the model that would be best for us is if the coach reports to the GM and then the GM reports to the owner. Very simple. Um, some of the, well, honestly, the biggest problem in the Jets franchise has been the fact that our front office has been dysfunctional. The fact that we don't get our hires correct. I remember, you know, we mismatched the hires. Look at what happened with Rex Ryan, where we fired a general manager, but we kept Rex Ryan the head coach. And then we were looking for general managers and you're not gonna allow a general manager to pick his head coach. So most of the general managers turned us down. We ended up with, with Isaac and then Look what happened. There was just so many issues. You can look at just the pass off season and say, hey, there's big issues there. Look what happened with, um, you know, McCagnan and Adam Gay. It's just so much dysfunction in the front office that everything is just so out of order. And I think bringing order, bringing structure to your front office would do nothing but bode well for the future and the footing of your franchise. And I think that that's, that's something that is probably going to change going forward. So he talked about that. But the last thing uh, that he spoke about as well was Sam Darnold. He talked pretty glowingly about Sam Darnold. He said, you know, he wants him to remain a Jet, but that's up to Joe Douglas, you know? And, you know, it is what it is going forward. Joe Douglas is the general manager. Um, I know Joe Douglas and, and the new coach are probably going to, you know, get together about that and figure out how, where they want to go. But the fact that he, you know, he still feels like Sam Darnold could be a very capable uh, quarterback in this league and really likes him. He talked about, you know, his, uh, his ability you know, leadership ability in the locker room and how, you know, the locker room stayed together and Sam Darnold was a big part of that. So he spoke pretty highly of Sam Darnold. And uh, going forward, we'll see what they do with Sam. But, you know, I really like some of these things that Chris Johnson said. I really, really do. I think that he, um, again, has come to grips with a lot of the nonsense that's been going on for years, uh, you know, with the Johnsons running the Jets. And I think that he's just, he's been beaten down by it. <laughs> And a lot of it is, it's on him. And I think he's ready to turn that page and give the reins to Joe Douglas and allow Joe Douglas to be the guy to make decisions for the franchise going forward. So please comment down below. Let me know what you folks think. How do you folks feel about the Chris Johnson press conference? What are your thoughts about, um, you know, Chris Johnson possibly, you know, just taking a step back and allowing Joe Douglas to hold the reins? What are your thoughts about Sam Darnold going forward? Uh, do you think that they'll keep him on? Do you think that he's going to be the guy? What are your thoughts about the possible change in the power structure of the franchise uh, with the coach reporting to the GM and the GM reporting to the owner? So I want to I hear from you folks about this. So you folks have a good one. Peace.